A little while ago, I drove the Shelby Mustang GT500, and I thought it was really rather good, very appealing. The only problem was, Ford's not bringing it to the UK. There is no right-hand drive version. Now, however, Clive Sutton thinks it might have an answer to that. This, the CS850 GT. With its new carbon fibre bonnet, carbon fibre rear deck lid, carbon side skirts, carbon rear valance and diffuser, did I mention the deeper, more jutting chin? Oh, and the optional £6,000 track spoiler on this car, it looks impressively menacing. I compared the GT500 to the Hulk for fairly obvious reasons, and this to me seems, well, a bit like the symbiote version of that, the Venom version of the Hulk. And of course, if you're going to produce a non-official version of a car, then, well, you kind of need to make it even bigger, even better. So, while the GT500 had 760 brake horsepower, this has 847 brake horsepower. The GT500 had 625 pounds foot, this has 665 pounds foot. This has a manual as opposed to a DCT. And under there, making all that power and torque, while the GT500 had a roots type supercharger, this has the coolest sounding supercharger of all, a Whipple twin screw. Of course, one thing this surely can't beat it on is sound, because that GT500 was probably the loudest road car I have ever driven. This can't be louder. Can it? It is so loud. I swear the house moved a couple of inches when I started it up this morning. Whoa, took me by surprise. Thankfully, it has this fob here, which gives the quad X-Force exhaust a quieter map. It's definitely needed. Of course, this sort of gritty, enclosed setting plays to this car's aggressive demeanour, but how does it stack up on a good British B-road? After all, Batman always seems mean and aggressive in the city, but put him in the middle of a field and he looks like a scarecrow. skulking in the shadows, doesn't it? I really like this gear shift. It's a Barton short shift kit for the six-speed manual gearbox and it just feels great. It's the best manual I've tried in any Mustang. The shift itself is really sort of, well, as it looks really with this big piece of metal coming out here, but super precise as well and not clunky or heavy at all. I even like the look of it. It sort of looks like the sort of the pommel of some great sword sticking out of there. Pommel means little apple in Anglo-Norman, by the way. Always wanted to know that, didn't you? Enough of Granny Smiths and Pink Ladies, what about the rest of the fixtures and fittings inside this car? The interior trimming will cost you an extra £13,000, so it's certainly not cheap, but for that you get all this sort of grey, white leather with a blue piping and the grey Alcantara as well. You also get this big piece of carbon fibre moulding across the dashboard as well, and various little sort of hints like here on the new flat bottom steering wheel that say Sutton. I'm not quite sure about that to be honest, it doesn't quite have the sort of gravitas for a car like this, I don't think. Sutton, I mean I get it because people name cars after themselves, it's, it's a well known thing to do. Ferrari for example. That supercharger under the bonnet too, named after Art Whipple. But I just think this car I don't know, it deserves a, a more imperious name. I've been trying to think about it and thinking, well, Mustang, horses, Bucephalus. How about that? That was the, the great black horse from Alexander the Great. All right, don't like it? Fine, I mean, it's better than Sea Biscuit, isn't it? 
let me know what name you would give it in the comments below at YouTube's that. Right, that's enough about horses' names. What about that 847 brake horsepower and the 665 pounds foot of torque? It all sounds completely untamable on the road, but the nice thing is that actually most of the time you can drive this around and it just feels very smooth and actually pretty usable as well. You just have this feeling of a huge surfeit. When you do try and use it all, I think it's it's all there, it's fair to say. Traction is actually pretty good, thankfully. And it's relatively sort of cold today. The roads have been slimy in places and it hasn't been an utter monster. Clive Sutton doesn't actually make any specific performance claims for the car, but I'd imagine it's a few tenths behind the Shelby GT500's claimed 3.3 to 62, simply because it has a manual box compared to the official Ford's dual clutch paddle shift. I have to say, most of the time I've been driving around with this in its quieter mode. I've got an A for acceptable. If you do switch it across to B, for badass Bucephalus, B for Bucephalus. <laughs> it sounds like some sort of small war has broken out in rural England. I mean, that's just antisocial. It really is. I've got to turn it off again because <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's a bit like the exhaust equivalent of launch control on a Tesla or a Taycan or something like that. You just you try it a couple of times and it's quite amusing, but ultimately, no, it's too much. To be honest, even without the exhaust on loud, this still gets an awful lot of attention. I had a bus driver stop earlier on just to tell me how much he liked it. Obviously one of the things about the GT500 is that it's not all about the engine. Mostly, but not all. In this, the chassis, well, it changes direction really well actually. It feels laterally they've got it very much sorted. It's just sort of vertically, the damping's not quite there. You still get a little bit of sort of lack of control through the corners which then just makes it feel sort of still quite a big car just a little bit remote certainly on a road like this it's just not all tied down quite as well as the Shelby if you want the full list of suspension changes over a standard 5 litre Mustang it is as follows deep breath now a G-Track K brace billet aluminium vertical links adjustable rear tow link IRS subframe alignment kit and bushing support system upgraded springs upgraded adjustable anti-roll bars bump steer kit and camber bolts all topped off with custom 20 inch Vosen wheels nine and a half at the front and ten and a half at the rear Turn in. just feels a little soft to the front and then not entirely connected to the rear. It's, the balance is still fundamentally there. It's fine, but you just don't have the confidence quite to push it as hard as a GT500. The suspension setup's actually kind of fine for every day. It's still a pretty comfortable car. Sadly, the usability takes something of a hit with that front splitter, which means you have to be pretty cautious in multi-story car parks or speed bumps. Other than that, it looks great. I think overall it's a pretty good package, it just doesn't have quite the sort of cohesion and polish that the manufacturer car does, which you know, to be honest is probably to be expected. It would take an awful lot of development to put this much power and torque into a standard car and make it absolutely perfect. The CS850 GT costs £115,000 on the road, but this one with the wing and extra interior upgrades costs £133,000, which is a lot. However, 
if you really do prize power, then to get 847 bhp from a right-hand drive manufacturer car, you're looking at a Ferrari SF90. And they're the best part of £400,000 before options. Thank you very much indeed for watching that. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure some of you are wondering why on earth I decided to mention Enzo Ferrari instead of Henry Ford or Carroll Shelby, which would have been far more appropriate. Who knows? Anyway, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's just a simple click and do turn on those notifications as well. It all really, really helps us. And yeah, see you next time.